Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief tour of the new Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE. This is still in beta, although it is expected out very, very soon. So what we're going to do here is I just want to have a look at first the release notes, and then we're going to take a little bit of a tour of the desktop in case you haven't seen XFCE or Linux Mint in a little while. We're going to talk about this. Now, one of the things I noted looking out of the box is it does appear that the system requirements are the same for XFCE as they are for Cinnamon. XFCE has traditionally been thought of as a little bit more of a lighter, lightweight desktop environment, although in, in the later incarnations, it seems to not necessarily be the case. So I don't know if there's really a difference. Is Linux Mint just saying, hey, use more system resources than we know? Because I know other distros that use it, like MX Linux, do ask for half of the system requirements as Linux Mint. Maybe there's more things going on in the background. I don't really know. But let's go ahead and have a look first and foremost at the release notes, and then we're going to uh, look at the distro itself once it is installed. So jumping on over here, we have our XFCE beta release. Inside of this, we have a what's new and we have a release notes. So first we're going to go up and have a look at your what is new. So there's, a, if you watch my Linux Mint Cinnamon, there's a lot of overlap in what is new. Uh, as a brief summary, pretty much everything, everything that is in the Cinnamon is in here with the sole exception of the new theme adjustments. That is something in the Cinnamon desktop, not something that Linux Mint packages separate from the distro. So let's go ahead and have a brief look. First and foremost, this is a LTS support, lasts until 2027, so you get about four years of support before you need to change anything around. Uh, the slick greeter is all the same. This is just a little bit of adjustments and improvements to the greeter options that you have inside your login screen. And they do mention here that the slick greeter receives support for Wayland sessions. Um, Linux Mint has tr traditionally not necessarily held on to um, the whole Wayland philosophy as of yet. It's not that they don't ever believe in it. It's just that they are right when they're saying it's not completely ready for prime time. Linux Mint focuses on having a system that works. They are not focused on the latest and greatest toys. They're not going to be pushing pipe wire uh, quite as quickly because of Pulse Audio. Maybe they should. But X still works in all scenarios. Wayland still has some issues. For example, I'm doing all these Debian videos. I do not have the ability to do good screen capturing with Debian because the desktop environment we chose utilizes Wayland and not X. And so I cannot use simple screen recorder. I can't use other screen recording systems and tools. I think I might be able to use OBS at this point in time. I'm not sure. So I actually have to record those videos by capturing the screen on the capture card and recording it on a separate computer. Those are some of the problems you have with Wayland. And if you do not understand that and you're needing those types of functions, like for example, I use screenshot stuff all the time in my uh, in my basic web design work. I'm screenshotting or doing screen, simple screen recorder for doing client training videos or things like that. And if we have a system that doesn't work, you know, that's a problem. This is why Linux Mint's not jumping onto Wayland. Some people might have said, oh, that's stuck in the past. No, it's not stuck in the past. It's just not driving so fast into the future that things start breaking. And that's the point of Linux Mint. But we do actually see some support for Wayland sessions on the login screen. So there you go. Uh, you may not only log in, you know, you might see access the login screen, but uh, who knows. But you know, as it's available and works out of the box, you know, that's certainly the case. So here, uh, the course of software manager is shared between everything. Uh, we talked about this in the video on Linux Mint Cinnamon, where we're looking at the, uh, you know, the new revised software store. We have all of our applications and flat packs, a little bit sleeker design, much nicer. A lot of changes to the PIX system. Again, I've not used the PIX system. Maybe I need to look at it a little bit more. Um, lots of improvements over there. Now, this is where the look and feel is going to depart from Cinnamon because this is something that is managed by the desktop environment and not managed by the distro itself. And so in this part here, we do have very similar look and design, uh, but it's done utilizing the 
the standard way of doing that in XFCE, not with the nice new slick uh, theme editor that they have put inside of Cinnamon. All your tool, ta uh, tool tips, title bars, mono icons, all that is going to be the same. Basically, they did a lot of adjustments so that whether using a light theme or a dark theme, things should work out pretty well, which is good because there have been some times when things stopped working, and that's kind of problematic. Of course, they did talk about a few applications where they did utilize the Arueda icons, um, and so you'll kind of see what that looks like. The desktop portal, um, this was added for XApp for Cinnamon, Mint, uh, and X, uh, Mate, excuse me, and XFCE. This provides better compatibility between desktop environments. So if you are likely to be using different desktop environments, this is a great tool to be able to uh, put this in and to uh, actually make sure that things are going to work well if you're switching between those different environments. Uh, maintaining things like flat packs and things like that are going to work a little bit better to prefer your light mode, your dark modes, and things like that. Uh, XFCE is 418. This is a very boring uh, old school web page about that. There's something beautiful about the old school web page. So just looking, you can look over here. Thumbnail services has improvements. They did some adjustments to the clock uh, tool inside the panel uh, just to get rid of a little bit of redundancy and a few extra settings options have been changed and uh, moved around. Uh, they've made a few adjustments to what is available inside your desktop manager. You can remove the delete menu from the option. Of course, that's the one that deletes a file completely without transitioning it to the trash can first. So you can do some of those are, are new. Warpinator has been utilized across several different distributions and places, gains a lot of uh, widespread use in the Linux community and beyond right now as a really good network-to-network -network LAN-based tool to share files between phones and devices. And so really this is a really nice system here to demonstrate, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of security adjustments and things like that. And then a few more of those. So that is what we have. Of course, you can check their release notes. Issues with Secure Boot that are impacting all Ubuntu derivatives. As soon as that is found, it's going to be fixed up. And then they have a few other issues. So if you are playing around with it, you might want to have a look at here and see what is specifically relevant to your setup. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on into our system itself. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this up in a virtual machine and we're going to jump on over and have a look. So here we are, Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE. Okay, and so here we are um, jumping in here and you can see our welcome screen has our first steps over here. So the first is you'll notice we don't have the nice tools over here to do the uh, desktop edits like we had in Cinnamon, but we get this here, which is giving us the giant text panel of all of the different themes that we have. So not nearly as elegant, not nearly as user-friendly, but it is something if you wanna do that, and then uh, we can max uh, match XFW uh, Window Manager 4 theme, if there is one, you can do that. Uh, that's a separate setting. So you can do that and um, Here's the, as you're changing things around. All right, so here's your various icons. So you can use your, your various icons. Ooh, that one there has, a, it has an exclamation part mark next to it. Oh, I meant to hit that button, not the uh, other one there. There we are. Let me move our folders over here just so we can get a better look at our folders. So there is what our folders are gonna look like there. And I think we do have the, I forget the name of it down here, but we should actually have the, like the ones that are styled like Ubuntu as well with a few different colors. So you have a few different options in there to, to choose from. Here's your fonts and your other settings. All right, so there's that. Your system snapshots is gonna launch time shift. We have a driver manager, our update manager. Uh, system settings. So you can see it's much the same as Cinnamon. We have a few extra tools and such. Uh, it does have an older design, especially since we messed up the theme down here. It doesn't look nearly as pretty. It uh, looks a little bit older, and that's always how XFC has been, is it always has seemed a little older. Um, it doesn't have a lot of the, the modern connections like online accounts and things like that. You're not going to get that kind of stuff to work quite as uh, 
quite as readily on a system like XFCE. So if you are wanting to connect your next cloud account or, you know, God forbid, your Google or your Microsoft account, you're not going to be doing that through XFCE. You're going to want to stick with Cinnamon, which has the capabilities of doing that out of the box. But if you do like something that, that is a little bit simpler, maybe a little bit more old school, uh, that might even utilize a few less system resources, this one might be it. Let's have a look at what our task manager is going to look like. And let's see. So we're running, let's see, we're only running 860 megabytes. Now, Cinnamon at this point in time would be running close to 1, 1 1.5. So it is a little bit lighter. There's a few less system processes going here on XFCE than you will have over there on uh, on Cinnamon. So it is definitely a lighter, um, a lighter system. So this is uh, back to where we were. Here's your desktop settings. We have your backgrounds. We can enable delete option. So um, down here, let's go ahead and just, uh, we'll just create an empty file. And if you right click on a file, you'll see you have a move to trash and a delete. You don't have the ability to remove that. So uh, if you're worried about accidentally removing a file, you can go ahead and drop that out. That's a new XFCE feature. So now you just have the move to trash can in place. And of course, your icons over here. What do you want on there? I like putting the trash and things on my system there. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we have it. Here's your removable devices, network devices, disks, drives, and others devices. So you can toggle each of those on as you like. So going back to your all settings, here's our panel settings. Of course, you can add extra panels if you want a panel on the top and a one on the bottom. If you want to move it on the side, you can do that. Of course, uh, this one does allow you to actually um, move the panel around. So if you want it on the side or on this side, you have that freedom and flexibility to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, move back to the horizontal panel and uh, put it back down the bottom where all sync systems happen to be. And then relock it and then you won't uh, do that. You can hide always, never, or intelligently your panel. And then if you want to... You can go ahead and adjust the number of rows or the size of your panel, things like that. So all those are nice options you have inside of your panel. Here's your window manager. So here, again, you can adjust your theme to your window manager. So you'll notice that, um, let me go ahead and pull this up again. You'll notice that these guys are managed up here in your appearance. All right. Uh, so let's go back and find... Uh, there we go. Mint Y red. Okay. And then if you want to adjust your windows up here, you're going to need to match the same theme up here. So a few extra steps to get the overall consistency looking the same in XFCE. Oh, and uh, I also forgot. We also do need to go back over here and find the icon that we want. So the good news about that is that you do have the ability to, uh, to, have your system a little bit more customized uh, but the downside is if you want everything to look unified with the similar accents you have a few extra steps to make that work so that is one of the things that you're going to have in xfc that's going to be a little bit different here's your driver manager here's your software manager of course we talked briefly about that um, and uh, this is going to be a new tool. Now, uh, one of the things we're saying, you'll see that our system has updates. Uh, I wanted to do run updates before here, but I have a fairly slow internet connection here. And so um, the, uh, the update manager is in the middle of updates and stuff. So things are going to take a little bit longer to generate my system cache. So I don't think we're going to wait for all of that. Here is some very in-depth settings editors. Um, so here's some extra items. Uh, icon list view, list view. So you can basically toggle a lot of different stuff over here. This is kind of like your, um, your old, I forget the name of the application in, uh, in GNOME that allowed you to do a lot of these changes and adjustments on a very, very fine level. So you're going to want to look up separate um, um, uh, separate tutorials just on utilizing that. So uh, that's going to take too long to load up that software cache because of my slow internet right here. But um, that is a, a brief tour of XFCE, looking at the software available. It does have all the whole suite of software applications that you'd need for a full system. Some people say that that is a little bit too bloated. Some people suggest that it is 
Um, uh, it is just right. I said right on that just right. We don't have a bunch of games pre-installed like you get on Debian, but we do have things like character maps, and I must be a psychopath because I actually do use character maps, believe it or not. Um, I love the image writer and the stick formatter. I certainly never use Redshift. <laughs> um, I just don't buy into that whole, we got to make the light softer during the nighttime. Nah, there's no evidence about that. Um, here's just enough, just, just enough applications here to make things work, but not so many applications that um, it is... Um, uh, that it is overwhelming. We do get the full suite here of LibreOffice rather than just your basic writer uh, uh, presentations and, and um, uh, spreadsheets. But uh, we do have uh, the databasing and draw as well. So this is a very nice. We have a separate backup tool for your personal files. We have time shift for your uh, system restore points. Of course, we talk about both of these on the uh, the Debian video from the other day. So if you want to get more information about the backups and how to use those, we can go ahead and do that. Of course, we didn't use the backup tool. We use another one. But the principles are all about the same. So with that, there is our brief tour of Linux Mint 21.2 XFCE beta. And uh, let me know your favorite part about this distro in the comments down below. And uh, let me know, is this one that you regularly use and what you love about it? Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.